Hello everyone, welcome back to Just My Stupid Opinion. So I thought that we would talk about something a little bit different, the SNC scandal, because that's all anyone's talking about, whether that's on social media or the news, and that's all I've been talking about for the last month or so. And it is still important, there's still much going on, but I decided that maybe we should take a focus into something else. So I wanted to talk a little bit about our veterans. This is a tweet that Justin Trudeau ended up putting out on the 10th of July 2018 where he says, Protecting peace, freedom, and democracy can be a tough and dangerous job. The men and women of the Canadian forces deserve our gratitude and respect for all they do. Thanks for having me today. And he's even tweeted about the veterans more recently. This is something he just put out on March 5th, so just two days ago. He says, Brave and Broken is a local organization that offers help and comfort to veterans in PEI. Yesterday in Charlottetown, I sat down with founder De Dennis McKenzie to talk about how we can better support the brave men and women who serve our military. Veterans were there for Canada when we needed them the most, and now we must do be there for them. The hardworking people of Veterans Affairs Canada advocate for veterans and their families every day. Thank you for your important work. Now, the real reason that I think he ended up putting this out is because it was a preemptive strike of an article that just came out today, and I believe that Trudeau knew this that this was coming, and he was trying to defuse it before it happened. This came out just a few hours ago that says waitlist for disabled veterans to benefit uh, waitlist for disabled veterans benefits ballooned to almost 40,000 under Trudeau. Almost 40,000 veterans were waiting at the end of November to find out whether their application for financial assistance would go through, according to Veterans Affairs Canada. That represents an increase of roughly 11,000 when compared to last year and new wait times more than 16 weeks. So Trudeau is more than happy to use the veterans as a photo op, but he doesn't actually care for them. In fact, he kind of looks down on them, and this seems pretty clear about his demeanor towards them, what him and his government have done over the last little bit. But again, they make for good photo ops. Don't forget that not too long ago, we had that photo of Trudeau when he was in Mali visiting the troops, and a lot of Canadians were trying to use that in some sort of Oh, isn't our leader way better than the American leader because Trump didn't manage to go visit the troops uh, when he was supposed to around the same time? But what Trudeau has done proves quite different than what he uh, than what he says. Now, this is true in almost everything, but specifically, it's true for our veterans. When forty thousand veterans are lo are looking to see whether they will receive their benefits, that is a huge number of the Canadian forces. The Canadian forces have maybe between 40 and 50,000 active members right now between both the regular forces and the reservist forces. We have a very tiny military, and if 40,000 veterans are waiting for this, then we are talking about almost the same number of active members in our Canadian forces. There is the same number of veterans waiting for these benefits. But we can even look more into the past of what Trudeau has done and what he said. Let's do this chronologically. So a few weeks ago, Trudeau's government uh, was to spend billions less for severely disabled veterans. These are the people that have actually been injured in the line of duty, not just served, but injured. And then they were going to spend billions less than compared to the Harper government or even previous governments before him. If he really cared about the veterans, especially those who have sacrificed for us, then he'd be more than willing to actually spend the money necessary to make sure that they're receiving the treatment that they needed. But there's more. One month ago, Trudeau government allegedly hid shortchanging veterans $165 million. Now, this might be pocket change to the to the government themselves, but this is not pocket change to the veterans. This is the money that they need. $165 is million dollars is nothing to sneeze at. But he was more will he was more than willing to actually shortchange him by this amount. But there's more. Trudeau government cuts $1.8 billion in pension funding to disabled Canadian veterans. This is two months ago. This is also back when Seamus O'Regan was the Minister of, For of uh, Veterans Affairs. And let's not forget that Seamus O'Regan tried to compare him leaving his previous job as to actually a veteran leaving the armed forces. He literally tried to make the comparison of him working with the media, him having to change suits all the time as if this is going out and fighting for your country, being in a war zone, being injured in the line of duty, and even if they weren't physically injured, there's plenty of psychological and mental issues that come from people who serve in the military. Militaries all across the world, whether America, Canada, over in Europe, Asia, they all, a bunch of them, have high suicide rates for the stuff that they've seen and the stuff that they've done. 
but they're willing to make cuts of $1.8 billion in pension funding to these disabled veterans. We can also look to the example of this, uh, this lady right here, Captain Kimberly Fawcett. The government refused to pay for veterans' prosthetic leg. Canadian Armed Forces Captain Kimberly Fawcett is waging a war with the federal government. The, veterans was, the veteran was involved in a heartbreaking car crash in 2006 while in uniform. Her infant son was killed and she lost her leg. The forces say that she was on duty during the accident, but as Mercedes Stevenson reports, the government is refusing to pay for Fawcett's prosthetic limb. Now granted, this is back in 2006 before Trudeau was even in office. I mean, this was even before he was an MP. But the point is, is now she's trying to get the benefits for her being injured in the line of duty, whether that was in combat or not, and they were not willing to do this. It got so bad that they actually, people started up a GoFundMe page for her. And over the last couple months, they managed to raise $17,185 for her surgery, which is going to cost her $34,000. But there's more. Trudeau government achieves $500 million in savings by targeting veteran pensions. It seems the Trudeau government is willing to balance the budget off the backs of those who had already lost so much. This is four months ago. So in order to make up for his reckless spending and the reckless spending of his government, he is prepared to take that out of the savings of veteran pensions once again. The targeting veterans pensions seems to be just a specialty for the Trudeau and the Liberals. But once again, they make good photo ops. And probably the most famous example that we have here today was during a town hall last year. This was uploaded by Steeper33 on February 2nd, 2018. And let's take a listen into what this gentleman says. I'm sure you all you all know what it is already. I was prepared to be injured in the line of duty when I, went to, when I joined the military. Nobody forced me to join the military. I was prepared to be killed in action. What I wasn't prepared for, Mr. Prime Minister, is Canada have, turning its back on me. So which veteran was it that you were talking about? Thank you, sir. Thank you for your uh, passion and your strength and being here today to share this uh, justifiable frustration and anger with me and with all of us here. Uh, thank you for having the courage to stand here uh, and thank you for listening to my answer. On a couple of elements you brought up. First of all, uh, why are we still uh, fighting against certain uh, veterans groups in court? Uh, because. Uh, they are asking for more than we are able to give right now. Um, they are asking for more than we... Well, no. Hang on. That right there tells you everything you need to know. Along with everything that we've seen, he says that they're fighting veterans at court because they're asking more than we can give right now. But at the same time, he's making all these cuts to the veterans for their pensions, for wounded veterans. And I wouldn't be surprised that if we dug a little deeper, he's making cuts to the money that would be owed to families who have been, who have lost members who have died in, say, Afghanistan would be a good example. This guy does not care whatsoever for our veterans, despite the fact that he tries to play otherwise, despite the fact he tries to take the photo ops and make it seem like the Canadian forces love him. But we know, the, we know what's real. We know that the opposite is true. The Canadian forces must hate this man for everything that he's done for them, and then he's going to ship them off to places such as Mali, which is one of the most dangerous peacekeeping missions that's ever existed, and it shouldn't even be considered a peacekeeping mission because it is an active war zone. There is no peace to be kept over there, but he's going to ship them off simply because he's trying to win back a seat on the UN Security Council. There have been over 170 blue helmets who have been killed over there and we sent a few hundred Canadian forces members over there just to appease the UN just to make Trudeau look good and then he thinks that a photo op when he goes to visit the troops is going to make everything better well maybe for those who actually fall for his bullshit but for everyone else that is paying attention we know the truth Trudeau doesn't care for these people 
and he wants to use them as photo ops and is prepared to put them in dangerous situation, risk their lives for his own political gain. The ruling class do not think like the average citizen. The ruling class see the people, the citizens, the veterans as expendable objects for their own personal benefit. That's all we are to them. That's all that the veterans of the Canadian Armed Forces are to them. And everybody should be appalled that this is the way that Trudeau is prepared to treat these people. I hope you're outraged. Thanks for stopping in, everyone. I'll be back soon with another video.